local rings um, so you we have already seen this that if x is a variety over uh, an algebraically closed field k and you take a point small x in capital X then uh, we have defined uh, 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 the local ring of the variety capital X at the point small x okay and uh, so this is the uh, this is the local ring of capital X at small x then we have also defined k x which is the uh, uh, the so called uh, uh, function field of x function field of x ok and uh, see we have uh, we have seen that uh, k x consists of equivalence classes of rational functions namely functions that defined regular functions which are defined not on all of x but on an open subset of x okay and of course the equivalence is that two uh, two functions are equivalent if they coincide on the intersection of their domains of definition um, on the other hand the local ring is supposed to be gotten by doing the same thing but concentrating only attention to regular functions in a neighborhood of the given point small x okay so uh, and we have seen that you know O x which is the set of all global regular functions on, on x this is a sub ring of, uh, of of course um, of uh, the local ring of every local ring and that is contained in the quotient field and in fact uh, of course k is of course sitting inside regular functions as constant functions okay and uh, and in fact uh, this k x is uh, uh, this k x is actually the quotient field of O x x the quotient field of this is exactly this. In fact uh, if you go to any open set u uh, then uh, which is non empty then k x is the same as k u and O u x is the same as O x x ok. So, uh, so I let me also write that this is this is also equal to O u x and this is also equal to k u where u is an open subset of x and yes small x is in capital U and uh, so local ring uh, does not change if you go to a smaller open set and the function field also does not change if you go to a smaller open set because 
so called smaller open set is actually not so small okay uh, any open any non empty open set of a variety is irreducible and it in fact it is dense so uh, what you are throwing out uh, the boundary is just a very small set okay so uh, so the and we have seen that the local ring uh, already uh, there is lot of information stored in these things uh, in fact uh, so I should also mention that this OX uh, so I should also say that OX is uh, this is equal to AX if X is affine uh, so that is also you also have that OX is the same as AX if X is affine and then and in that case this is also equal to the quotient field of AX of course uh, when I say uh, uh, when I write AX I this is defined only when if X is affine that is X is isomorphic to a an irreducible closed subset of some affine space and uh, of course there are so many other things uh, of course if X is projective we have seen that OX is this is equal to this okay if X is projective then uh, OX is just K alright then because there are no non constant global regular functions on a projective variety right. Um, then we have also seen that uh, the see the local ring uh, stores lot of information that so in fact uh, the dimension of x the topological dimension of x is the same as the krill dimension of the local ring at each of its points and this is also equal to the uh, transcendence degree over a small k of the extension capital kx capital kx is a the function field of x is a it is an extension of k it contains small k after all this k is a, a field these things in bit this is a uh, this is a finite I mean this is a this is a k algebra and uh, this is a local ring this is a local k algebra a local ring which is a k algebra whereas this is again a field this is a large and everything is contained in this big field okay. And small k to capital k x is a field extension okay because it is a bigger field containing a smaller field and then the transcendence degree of this over this namely the uh, by that one means the cardinality of a transcendence basis of this over this okay which measures the number of uh, uh, al maximum number of algebraically independent uh, you know transcendental elements over small k okay that is a measure of the dimension topological dimension okay and the dimension is also show also shows up as a cruel dimension of the ring okay and you also know that this is also equal to the the cruel dimension of ax if of course this is if, if x is affine okay so uh, already there is so much information but then my the object of this lecture is to tell you that this local ring is really very powerful thing it contains lot it stores a lot of information so so let me tell you the first thing um, so it is about uh, uh, so it is about the uh, uh, yeah so all right so uh, so let me talk about first about local rings and uh, morphisms okay so you know suppose x and y are varieties and f is a morphism of varieties you know that that means that x and y uh, could be both x and y could uh, each of x and y could be affine or quasi affine or projective or quasi projective uh, and uh, the fact that f is a morphism means that f is continuous and f pulls back regular functions to regular functions. So, uh, 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 so the point is that you know if I take a point small x here and it goes to the point small y which is the image of x, x under f and you take an uh, uh, you take an open set u an open set here which contains the point x and you take uh, 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 well rather I will do it the other way around 
let me take an open set V uh, which is a neighborhood of the point Y and let me set U equal to F inverse V then of course uh, F being continuous the inverse image of V is an open set I call that as U and then of course F factors like this this is just F restricted to U this diagram commutes okay and uh, now you have a map from O uh, you have a map from OV to OU which is actually O of F inverse of V and the map is just the pullback of uh, uh, regular functions so uh, the notation is F hash and what does it do if you give me a regular function G on OV what I do is that I mean what this does is that it pulls back uh, G to F hash G and what is F hash G? F hash G is just first apply uh, first apply uh, F restricted to U and then apply G. So uh, F restricted to U followed by G. So this is what. So this is just pullback of functions. Okay. So uh, so basically what's happening is that uh, giving a G on O V means that you are giving uh, you are giving a uh, uh, function uh, from V to K which is being thought of as A1 uh, and uh, you know uh, if there is a risky topology on K you have A1 and this G is a morphism. So a regular function is uh, just a morphism into A1 so G is a morphism into A1 and then you compose it with this and, and, and then you get a morphism like this and this is precisely F hash of G this is the pullback of G by F okay and the condition for a morphism is that not only F should be continuous but uh, whenever you start with a regular function on a target on an open subset of the target uh, when you pull it back you should get a regular function on the pull back of that uh, open set on the source okay that is part of the definition of a morphism and one of the important things is that uh, what this leads to is that from F this induces uh, uh, a map f hash y which will go from the local ring of y at small y to the local ring of capital X at small x okay you have a map at the level of local rings right and th this map is of course again it is induced by the same thing namely what you do is uh, what is what is an element here an element of the local ring is just an equivalence class of a function which is regular of on an open neighborhood of the point y. So uh, you have uh, uh, something like V comma G. This is what an element here looks like. It's an equivalence class where G is a regular function on V. G belongs to O V, and V is a neighborhood of Y. V contains the point small y. And what do you do? It's very simple. You simply send it to the class that corresponds to the pullback of that function, which is also a regular function. So I take f f hash G. Uh, and I take uh, I take it on U, which is f inverse of V, and I take this uh, pair, and then I take the class. So this is how this map is defined. So all I'm trying to say is that if you have a morphism of varieties, that morphism induces for every point small x, and you uh, you take its image uh, in uh, in capital Y, you get in the reverse direction you get a morphism of local rings. Okay, and you get one morphism like this gives you a whole bunch of morphisms of local rings going in the other direction okay one for each point here and its image there right. So uh, so you have this situation and now you can see that uh, it is it is rather easy to see that you know uh, if, if f is an isomorphism if f is an isomorphism then you also have a map going in the other direction okay and uh, that map will induce a map in this direction now. And you will see that if f is an isomorphism, then all these maps on local rings are all isomorphisms. Okay. So in fact, uh, I, I must tell you that all these ring maps that we are talking about here are not just ring maps; they are in fact k-algebra homomorphisms. Okay. They are they are identity on k and uh, they are k-linear. Okay. So uh, so so it's clearly it's clear clearly uh, if f is an isomorphism isomorphism then uh, f hash y is an isomorphism 
for all small y in capital y, for all small y in capital y. So, you have this, this is very clear, okay, because you just have to uh, f induces uh, f hash y in this direction and then f inverse will induce uh, a map in this direction which will be f inverse hash x and you will have f inverse hash x will be the inverse of f hash y okay okay. So, let me write that since f inverse hash x will be just f hash y inverse you will get this okay. So, uh, because you know from this diagram if f is a if it is an isomorphism g pulls back to uh, f hash g uh, under f then f hash g pulls back to g under f inverse okay it is quite obvious. So, uh, but the beautiful thing about local rings is that you can decide whether something is a morphism using uh, the uh, fact that uh, it is a it is a homeomorphism it is a morphism which is a homeomorphism okay that is a topological isomorphism plus it induces at the local rings isomorphisms. So, that is the big fact. So, here is the theorem the theorem is uh, a morphism here from x to y of varieties is an isomorphism if and only if uh, f is a homeomorphism and f hash y is an uh, is an isomorphism for all y and y. So, here is a very powerful theorem that tells you to th that tells you about the power of local rings. So, what it tells you is that if you want to check a morphism as an isomorphism then you first check it is a topological isomorphism okay then check at the local rings the the, is the morphisms induced at the level of uh, local rings they are all isomorphisms then the morphism is an isomorphism. So, for the proof of this uh, you see uh, one way one way we already discussed that if f is an isomorphism then of course, more uh, f is a homeomorphism and f y hash is an isomorphism for every y that is something that we already seen okay. We have to prove the other way around okay. So, uh, one way is already uh, done. So, assume that uh, f is a homeomorphism f is a morphism which is a homeomorphism. Uh, and f hash y is an isomorphism for all small y in capital Y okay. So, what do I have to prove I have just have to prove that f is an isomorphism which means I have to show that f inverse is a morphism that is all okay. How do I show f is an isomorphism just by showing that f has an inverse but f already has a set theoretic inverse because it is a homeomorphism f inverse is a continuous map f has a uh, the continuous map f inverse okay uh, which is also a homeomorphism. I just have to show that this f inverse is a morphism once I am done once I once I prove that I am done okay. So, uh, we only have to show f inverse is a morphism, but you see f inverse is a homeomorphism. So, f, f inverse is already continuous okay. So, the only thing you will have to check is that it pulls back regular functions to regular functions okay. How do you check something is a morphism you have to check two conditions one condition is that it, it is continuous the second condition is that you have to prove show that it pulls back regular functions to regular functions. So, but f inverse is already f is already a homeomorphism. So, f inverse is also a homeomorphism. So, it is continuous the only thing I will have to therefore, check is that f inverse pulls back regular functions to regular functions. functions. So, uh, since f inverse is already continuous we only have to show f inverse is f inverse pulls back 
regular functions to regular functions. I just have to show this. Okay. So. Uh, So what do I do to do that? So you know I have this. Uh, uh, so you know I have the situation is like this. Uh, so here is x, here is f inverse, and here is y. I to show f inverse already. Of course, is a homeomorphism. I have to show it pulls back regular functions, regular functions. So what I'll do is I'll take, I'll take a, I'll take an open subset u, u here. Uh, open subset okay uh, of course whenever i talk about open subset i'm uh, i'm not mentioning it but i'm only interested in non empty open subsets okay so <coughs> then i take uh, i take f inverse inverse of u which is actually f of u which is v and this is an open subset here because after all f is an open map f is a homeomorphism so it's an open map so f of u is an open subset so so f inverse inverse of u is just f u which is just v and uh, well f takes u to v so i have i have two arrows one arrow in this direction uh, which is an isomorphism uh, topological isomorphism which is f restricted to u and i have a map like this which is f inverse restricted to v uh, okay i have this what do i have to show i have to show that start with the regular function here I have to show that uh, f in uh, uh, f inverse pulls back a regular function to a regular function. So I'll have to look at uh, O u, which is a regular. This is, these are regular functions on u, and from here uh, I'll get O v. These are regular functions on v, and this is f inverse hash. Okay, it is. This, I have to check that this f inverse hash, which is pull, pulling back regular functions. Uh, by f inverse, uh, <coughs> I actually show that this has to have to show that this lands into this. Okay, so uh, so uh, so let me do something. Uh, if I write like this, then I'm already assuming that it's landing inside uh, O V. So I have to do something. I have to write uh, uh, O. So I'll I'll just write. Uh, uh, maps uh, uh, from uh, v to k, okay, and uh, mind you, I start with uh, 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 a h, which is regular function on u, okay. So I have h like this. Uh, it's a morphism into a1 okay and what i'll have to do is the pullback of h under f inverse hash is just composition of h with f inverse okay so i'll uh, so what i'll get is i'll, I'll just have to apply uh, i'll have to apply f inverse to v i have to take f inverse uh, restricted to v i have to first apply that and that will take me from here to here and then i have to apply h this is what it goes to okay and uh now so this is so this is so the composition is this so it's a, it's a map like this this is f inverse hash uh, of h okay it is just this f inverse followed by this h i pull back the regular function h to a function on v and i'll have to show that this function on v this function from v with values in k it's not just a function i have to show it's regular so the first the first thing that i want you to notice is that it's not just a map from v to k it's actually it actually goes into the subset of uh, maps continuous for the zariski topology from v to a1 certainly it's a continuous map because it's a composition of f, f inverse which is a continuous map and uh, uh, the map h uh, and the map h is continuous because mind you uh, any regular function is continuous 
after all a regular function is a morphism into a1 and a morphism is always continuous okay and so there is a composition of continuous functions so it is continuous right. But what I have to show so so this is not just here but it actually belongs here but what I have to show is that it actually belongs even in OV this is what I will have to show I will have to show that this is actually here I have to show it is regular alright and that is a smaller subset not every continuous map is a regular function okay. So um, but then the point is how do I check something is regular how do I check a map is regular see the notion of regular is something that is very local okay. So to check that something is regular I just have to check it at every point right. So you know uh, so I will have to just check that this function is regular at each point of V that is all I have to check right and so for that we do the following thing you know uh, uh, So now comes the this business about uh, 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 so now comes this now I will have to use this hypothesis that f inverse uh, hash uh, I mean this f y hash are all isomorphisms for every small y in capital Y I will have to use this. So what I will do is I will start with a I will start with a y in v so uh, I have uh, so I have uh, uh, you start with a small y in v and you take uh, small x in u with f of x uh, is equal to y which is the same as saying uh, uh, x is f inverse y okay. So uh, the small x small y goes to uh, small x and this y is f x f of small x and uh, and of course I have chosen y in v so you know I have I have this ov is regular functions on v then I have I have this o y y which is the same as o v y because as I told you uh, the, uh, the local ring does not change if you go to a smaller open set all right and you know this is the regular functions are sitting inside the local ring of course okay and uh, on the other hand uh, uh, I have also uh, uh, O O x x O capital X small x which is a local ring of capital X at small x is the same as O u x because after all u is a smaller open set which contains a point small x and the local ring does not change if you go to a smaller open set and this is also contained inside this okay. And the point is that this f inverse hash induces f inverse hash x. Uh, oh, mm, yeah. So f inverse. Mm, mm, so I'll have to. I still have to say that f inverse is. Uh, 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 yeah, so I need to I need to do something here. So I'll not use this. I'll rather use the the map that is in the other direction, which is given to me. What is given me given to me is that f y hash is an isomorphism. So you know, so there is a map like this, which is f y hash. Okay, and this is an isomorphism. This is given. It's given that this is an isomorphism. All right, it is given that this is an isomorphism. And mind you, uh, this f y hash is induced by f, which is actually going in this direction. Okay. So uh, it's given to me that this, uh, uh, you know, this f y hash is an isomorphism for every small y. Okay, I have to use that. So, well, uh, so what do I do? I do the following thing. So you know see this this h is a regular function on u okay since h is a regular function on u it gives me a germ at the point small x namely what is the germ it, the germ is just you take the equivalence class u comma h uh, you take the pair u comma h and take its equivalence class 
that is an element here ok. This is how you have a map from the regular functions on an open set to the local ring at a point on that set namely you take this pair consisting of the regular function and that open set and take the equivalence class and such equivalence classes uh, up to equality on intersections uh, is what constitutes the local ring at the point ok. So I, I have this but then you know f hash y is an isomorphism so this this comes from something here and that is here that is in the local ring therefore what it means is that uh, so let me write this down uh, since uh, f hash y is an isomorphism there exists uh, a germ here which goes to that and how do how is a germ here represented a germ here is represented by a regular function on an open subset of y ok. So, uh, so what I have is well I have uh, there exists uh, w comma uh, let me use some other symbol I have not I have not used g let me use g there exists w comma g which is a germ an element of the local ring of capital Y at small y uh, 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 which is of course the same as O if you want O V Y uh, so you know in that sense W can I can even think of W as sitting inside V uh, such that in fact this is unique because it is an isomorphism such that uh, F hash Y of uh, this W comma G is uh, uh, is this class U comma H ok. So this this happens just because this has a pre image here this is an isomorphism ok. So what I get is I have I have a W comma G here which goes to this under F hash Y because f and that w comma g is of course a unique germ because it is it is uh, because f hash y is an isomorphism k algebra isomorphism. Now, now what you will have to notice is that uh, uh, see if, if you if you now look at uh, this g, g is defined on w and this w is uh, 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 an open see after all w is an open subset of y and uh, in fact uh, uh, it, it it contains the point small y so it all you will also intersect v you could even think of w as an open subset of v but in any case if you want to think of it as an open subset of y you can always intersect it with v. So what happens is that you have you have O of uh, 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 w uh, intersection uh, v you have this ok and you have uh, you have uh, you have this fellow here namely you have uh, uh, you have this g g is a regular function there okay and what's happening is that uh, well you know if i take if i take uh, if i take the image of this under f inverse okay then i'll get uh, i'll get f inverse of w intersection v okay uh, uh, and I will get O of this and this will be F hash I have this F hash okay this F hash uh, you see F is in this direction so F hash will be in this direction. So F will F will go from F inverse W intersection V to W intersection V okay so F hash will be pulled back of regular functions in the opposite direction namely a regular function on w intersection v goes to a regular function on f inverse of w intersection right and uh, so you know if you take if you take if you take this g here what will happen is that i'll get f hash g that will be here so this f hash g will be a regular function on f inverse w intersection v and uh, uh, and of course uh, f inverse of w intersection v will intersect u anyway because uh, uh, x is x is in w intersection v and x is also in u okay and the point is that uh, see this it is this f hash which actually induces f hash y because you should remember that the morphism the the morph the 
the k algebra homomorphism the local rings are induced from the given morphism by pull back of uh, regular functions. So the point is that you have a competitive diagram like this so you have if you go to the local ring of x at small x and you go to the local ring of y at small y then this is sitting inside this this is sitting inside this and you have this you have this f hash y and this f hash y is precisely going to take see the germ of f hash g uh, uh, see to whatever it is going to go to okay that is the same as taking the germ here and applying f hash y okay but if you know if I if I take the germ here g is going to uh, w uh, it is just going to this germ okay so it is just going to the germ of w comma g okay and that so so maybe I will write a little below so that I can have more space well this guy is really going to go here to to uh, germ of w comma g and this fellow by our uh, uh, by our definition of f hash y is going to go to uh, well uh, u comma h germ of u comma h and that is precisely what this f hash is f hash of g has to go to okay f hash of g has to go to u comma h all right so uh, so the moral of the story is that uh, you see f hash of g uh, f hash of g and see but f hash of g uh, will uh, go to what f hash of g will go to w intersection v intersection u uh, comma so let so let me write that down uh, correctly so what you will get here is uh, so let me have some more space to write so that what is this going to go to it is just going to go to uh, if you want w uh, f inverse w intersection f inverse of w intersection v comma f hash of g uh, and that is the same as uh, this fellow here uh, u comma h as germs because this is what goes to that okay and you have something like this this diagram commutes okay. Now so so the moral of the story is that this f hash g and h coincide when are two germs the same when when are two germs the same when are the germs of two pairs the same the, by the definition of the local ring the two pairs define the same germ if the functions coincide on the on an intersection so so what this tells you is that f hash of g coincides with with h in a neighborhood of uh, y of, of x okay f hash of g coincides with h in a neighborhood of x that is that is because these two germs are the same all right. But then uh, but what is f hash of g <laughs> f hash of g is just uh, you know uh, uh, you apply uh, you first apply uh, f and then you apply g. So f hash of g is just uh, g circle f uh, g circle of course f restricted to uh, uh, f inverse uh, v intersection w this is what f hash of g is f hash of g is just uh, the pullback of the function g so g is a regular function on w intersection v and uh, f takes f inverse w intersection v to w intersection v and you first apply f then you apply g the composition is precisely f hash of g. So what you are saying is that uh, g circle f residue to f inverse w intersection v coincides with h but that is the same as saying that you know uh, uh, because f is a homeomorphism it is the same as saying that uh, g coincides with uh, h circle f inverse v in a neighborhood of y so this so 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 this implies that g coincides with uh, 
H H circle F inverse restricted to V in a neighborhood of Y because because you know F uh, F is a homeomorphism. on whichever neighborhood f hash g coincides with h if you apply uh, uh, if you apply uh, f inverse on the right you will get that g will coincide with h restricted h circle f inverse v. So you see what is f hash g f hash g is g circle f restricted to f inverse w inter f, f restricted to f inverse of w intersection v okay that coincides with h okay then if you apply if you apply f inverse on the right you will get g coincides with h circle f inverse restricted to v in a neighborhood of y because you just apply f inverse okay so so what have we proved what we have proved is that this h circle f inverse v in a neighborhood of the point small y is equal to a g but what is g? g is a regular function. So what you have proved is that this function, this function that is defined on whole of on the whole of v, is at every point equal to a regular function. That means it is locally regular, and a function that is locally regular is regular because the definition of regularity is local. Okay, therefore we are done. So this implies that uh, uh, h circle f inverse v is actually in O v. So, uh, so that ends the proof. That ends the proof. So, so let me repeat. What we did is we started with a regular function h on u, and then we pulled it back. We wanted to show that this is a regular function on v. Okay, but what we end up proving is that for every point small y of capital V, in an in any if you give me any point small y of cap capital V. There is a neighborhood where this function is equal to a regular function. That means this function is locally a regular function. A function which is locally a regular function is regular because the def definition of regularity is local. This function is already continuous. Okay. So we have proved that f inverse hash pulls back regular functions to regular functions. We already know it's continuous. Therefore, f inverse is a morphism, and we are done. Therefore, f is an isomorphism. Okay. So what you must understand is that. Uh, uh, it is uh, you, you must realize that uh, uh, the uh, uh, to check that something is a morphism there are there are two steps one is to check topologically that it is a con is continuous the second thing is you have to check that it is uh, it pulls back regular functions to regular functions. But the point is that uh, the checking uh, that it pulls back regular functions to regular functions can always be done even at the level of local rings that is essentially the idea. So to check that a morphism is an isomorphism uh, you all you all you have to check is that the morphism is topologically an isomorphism namely a homeomorphism plus you must check that it induces isomorphism at the level of local rings okay, at all at, at, at every local ring okay. So uh, so that is the power of local rings so from now onwards whenever you see a whenever you see a morphism which is topologically a homeomorphism what is an easy way to check that it is a actually an isomorphism you just check that at local rings it induces isomorphisms and mind you I told you that there are morphisms which are topologically isomorphisms that is homeomorphisms but for which the inverse map is not a morphism there are morphisms like that they are bad morphisms okay. So uh, 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 just because a morphism is a topological isomorphism need not mean that it will have an inverse morphism it need not be an isomorphism it may be so a morphism can be yeah, an isomorphism in the topological sense between two varieties but it may not be an isomorphism in the sense of varieties it may not be an isomorphism of varieties. So you can have two varieties that are topologically the same topologically the same but as varieties they are very different okay okay so this is one uh, important fact about local rings the next thing that I want to talk about is about uh, uh, the uh, the other important fact about local rings is uh, uh, you know 
So, you know, here we have seen that uh, somehow the behavior of the morphism is controlled by all the uh, uh, ring homomorphisms that it induces at the level of local rings, right? That's what it. That's the whole idea. Now, for example, the fact that this is an isomorphism is captured from the fact that uh, all the local ring at the level at the local ring level it induces isomorphisms. Okay, so the, the the behavior of morphism at the local ring level controls everything. Okay, now that's at the level of morphisms. What about the level of regular functions? So, you know, uh, let me make a very simple statement, uh, which uh, tautolo it seems tautological. So, if you if you have a rational function on a variety, okay, uh, by definition, a rational function on a variety is a an element of the function field. It's basically it's a regular function defined on an open set. Of course, there could be a locus where it is not defined okay namely the complement there could be some closed set where it is not defined. Now uh, when do you conclude that a rational function is a regular function so you know uh, a rational function is an element here if capital X is a variety a rational function is an element here and when do I conclude that it is here okay when when do I conclude that a rational function is regular which means this is a, this means uh, what I am trying to say is I am trying to say that the rational function is actually defined everywhere okay when you say rational function a rational function is only a regular function that is defined only on an open subset it need not be defined on the whole variety okay but if you ask the question when is a rational function uh, uh, actually regular the answer to that is the following to check that something here is here it is enough to check that it is here in every local ring okay. So, uh, uh, it's a, it's a very, uh, uh, it's a very nice result to check that a rational. So you know, the idea is like this. The idea is that if you have a rational function, and if it is in every local ring, the fact that it is in every local ring means that you know, at every point in a neighborhood of the point, it can be extended to a regular function. That means you can extend it to a regular function everywhere. Therefore, it should be a global regular function. So it should be here, okay. But then, how does one prove it uh, accurately using competitive algebra? We'll uh, do that in the next lecture.